Hello, this is Sam from Sound on Sound magazine. I'm at Synthfest 2022 in Sheffield. I'm delighted to be joined by Paul from Soundtronics. Hello, Paul. How are yeah, you? Good morning. Very well, thank you. Yes. Excellent. So, um, Soundtronics is a new name to me, and this is a new thing to me. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing here. Well, Soundtronics started off uh, oh, about six, seven years ago, and it specialised in just doing kits from music from outer space and new synth, now for the DIYers. But when we come to this show, what, twice now we've been before, a lot of people are saying, we want it ready assembled. We're not, you know, we've got customers who are very loyal, we'd love to get sold on out and build our own modular synths. Others just want to get on and play music. So we decided time has come to actually make a ready-made assembled synthesizer. So about two and a half years ago, we developed the M squared synth. And that's taken two years in development. We launched it in Kickstarter in December last year. And that was successfully funded. And we shipped out the first batch of those, well, all the ones from the Kickstarter campaign, uh, by about April, May time this year. Amazing. And the first thing that strikes me about it is it's not Euro, right? This is always one of those sensitive subtopics that's discussed, isn't it? We already have a certain amount of, let's say, backlash from the 5U community because we set out to try and make 5U more affordable. The bridge gap between Eurorack, which is very cost effective, small, portable, up to the very large 5U modulars, which are very big and cumbersome, quite hard to move around. We thought, is there a happy medium between the two? So we developed this system where it's far shallower than the usual traditional 5U synths. And it is also the way, each of the, what we call pods. You can assemble your modules into a pod and clip the pods together. So it takes just two small screws at the back, about thumb screws. You can take a pod away, put it into your flight case, off you go to your, to your modular meat, whatever you're gonna do. And the other part of the backlash was we didn't go with the MU format, which is perhaps the most dominant format in the 5U size currently around. Because I'll be quite frank with you, technically it is not as good as the MOTM. Because we set up first of all to make it compact, MU inherently is wider than MOTM format, so we can get more modules per pod. It also worked on 12 volts rather than 50 volts, so it's caused certain amount of backlash. So, okay, we can accept that. So, we're not just going to ignore it though, of course. So, we actually have uh, on the system here, we now start to have an MU format as well. This is still going to be our preferred option because it's most cost effective, panels are cheaper to make, and you get more per pod. But for those who've got an existing MU format since, who want just the modules, then we'll make all the modules available in MU format. So we just set up now with um, power coating facilities, getting machines to fold and all the rest of it, because the MU format has these folded edges on the modules. Once we got that developed, the next sort of month or so, all this will be available in MU format as well. And beyond that, we're doing a URAC. Well, it sounds like you've <laughs> thought of everything. Um... We're trying to, because electronics remains the same. It's just how you pack it up into, pack it up into the, the, the hardware, the, the, the aluminium. So yeah, we have a URAC format as well. So we started to, if I can just, excuse me, please long enough. So we sort of had the, the lad in the machine shop saying, okay, do me a URAC version of a sequencer. And that's what he came up with. So we got these new se analog sequencers on the front of that one there in MU, MOTM, and now URAC. So we thought, well, why not just cross all bridges? <laughs> And it looks like you've got a seriously impressive range of modules on offer as well. Yeah, we start off with the sort of your mainly core modules, so all usual VCS and VCAs and your oscillators and so on. A couple of extra nice ones in there. We've got a paraphonic cord VCO. It's got four analog VCOs in it, but they've got a microprocessor to, to tune them all to make chords. And you've got 16 preset chords on there. That gives a nice beefier, mightier sound. And we've also got a digital sequencer, which is something which we always felt was with sequencers, you also, you've got your rows are pops, you configure something, it's great, then you've got to reset more for your next sequence. This is fully programmable and it's live editable as well. But that's not to replace an analog sequencer, it's in addition to. Hence why we're doing that, this version of a traditional eight step analog sequencer. And as well as selling individual modules, of course, you're selling just sort of entire systems and you've got a whole range, I understand. Yeah, we start off with the starter pod, is the System 10. And that has all the main elements you have of a, a two oscillator analog synth. Then from that, you can go up to a system 20, which is this one here. We start bringing the paraphonic chord VCO. We bring in a, a state variable filter. You bring in some more things now to give you much more tonal qualities over what your sound you're producing. Then you go right up to the one on the end there is the system 80. So eight pods, some like 66 modules in it. And that's a, a beast. <laughs> <laughs> 
So for those of us who might be looking at the sort of System 10, what sort of price are we looking at? A System 10 price, uh, it's about £1,200, I think, for a System 10. That's everything you see here with the power supply ready to go. Because the power supply is also a critical thing. You tend to find with modular synths, they have these very great big linear power supplies, heavy and so on. I understand the reasons why and why sometimes switch mode power supplies are you know, not perhaps favoured because of switching noise. Well, we spent months developing our own power supply. It's, an out, it's like a, a laptop power supply externally. Then behind here is a linear power supply which generates the plus minus voltages you need. So that's all included as part of it as well. And that's one power supply will feed up to four pods. So that's the best part of up to 40 modules. Wow, so you really are bringing kind of 5U pretty close down into the price range of Euro rack there. Oh yeah, that was the target. It's not going to be as low because the, physically it's a lot more um, panels, a lot more, you know, panel space itself is quite expensive. But yeah, as it starts to come down, it's certainly bridging that gap, which we said it would do. So certainly a lot of the people who've bought them so far are just starting out, in which case that's great because they're not preoccupied with other formats and have to be maintain compatibility. They start off with a format that they can actually now expand on and it's, hey, it's very cost effective for them. Oh, sounds brilliant. Well, I can't, can't wait to get my hands on one. <laughs> um, have a great show. Thanks, Paul. Thank you very much. Thanks for the time.